Hey, uh, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Kathy Neptune, and today we're going to kick off our summer salad season with a Mexican theme. And wait until you see the different way to present salad, which is a basic, basic dish, but in a really special way. Your friends and family will all be asking you to bring salads when you present them this way, and the variations are endless. And as you know, I love to give you ideas and tips on what to do and to wow your guests. So uh, today we're gonna vary this uh, through several shows, but today we're gonna do a Mexican theme. And I'm gonna start out by making a salad dressing. And because it's a citrus-based uh, Mexican, is usually lime, we're gonna start out with some lime juice that I have juiced here in our juicer. And don't forget to email me then uh, email, my email is on the screen for the resources to get all these wonderful tools that make your life easier in the kitchen. So I have juiced uh, several limes, probably three limes, and I've used the lime zest as well because most of your flavor is in the lime zest and I hate to waste anything. And in here, I've added, we want a little sweetness to offset the acids that we're putting in this dressing today. So I put about three tablespoons of white sugar and I added a little bit of the apple cider vinegar inside. And if you let this set for about half an hour, you'll find that the sugars will all dissolve inside. So in with this, we're gonna add exactly approximately that much lime juice. And you can see the zest is in there too. And this is gonna make quite a bit of dressing. And we need a lot, and you'll see why we need so much as we go along. So to that, I'm gonna add exactly, approximately this much mustard, not too much, just a little hint of that. and. Email me, so many of you email me for the exact recipe, and trust me, I do put tablespoons and measurements and teaspoons in there on the recipe, so I'll be happy to send those to you. I have here a Mexican seasoning, and if you don't have a Mexican blend, you can certainly use taco seasoning, fajito, fajita seasoning, um, any kind of Mexican flavoring that you might have, <coughs> excuse me. I inhaled a little bit of that. And we're gonna blend that in. And then I'm gonna grab some olive oil over here and just add some olive oil. So it's a very basic, simple vinaigrette. And we're gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper, some garlic, so I don't forget the garlic. This is a, I love this garlic press. You, don't, you notice I don't peel the garlic, and if you put it rounded side down in this particular garlic press, which I love, you don't have to peel your garlic, which is a great convenience when you're doing a lot of them. And then the peel wraps right around the foot like so. And yes, I have a trash bucket down there. I'm not throwing them on the floor. So there you go. And I usually hit it too. I usually aim for the bucket. And then... So probably two fresh cloves of garlic. Oh, this smells awesome. And then, what else? I guess that's it. Oh, a little salt helps just to bring out the flavors, just a little bit, because we're gonna have many layers of vegetables in here. And this is how we're gonna flavor all our layers. <clears throat> and we're gonna stream in some olive oil slowly, probably two thirds to three quarters of a cup, two to one ratio on the oil and acids that you're using. And what's nice about this salad is you can do a lot of these layers the night before and marinate them as well, which is a good thing to do. So let's, I think that's about right. And whatever we don't use, of course, you can always save and use at a later date and be sure to refrigerate whatever you don't use because you have garlic in there. So we're gonna set that aside. And I wanna show you um, a side dish that we're doing as well. And um, I'm gonna show you some slicing techniques. We're gonna do some tool time, but first I wanna get our kebabs into the oven. So let me go right back here. 
and these have been marinating for about 30 minutes and I've put them on skewers and I've used a mojito lime Mexican flavoring and I've skewered this with chicken and tomatoes red onions you can certainly add whatever you'd like peppers red and green and yellow would be nice but I thought this would be nice and you don't want to crowd them too much and my oven has been preheated at 400 degrees and we're going to cook these at 400 and I don't forget too to soak your skewers so they don't burn if you're doing these on the grill which you certainly could do these on the grill I love Mexican food it's so easy and refreshing for the summer and I'm using my stoneware bar pan, which I love. It gives you the same effects of grilling, and you don't have to turn anything over. They cook evenly. And I think that's just about right. Put that over here. Wash my hands in soapy water. You always want to make sure you don't cross-contaminate. And excuse my back. I'm going to pop these in the oven. Don't those look colorful? We're going to cook them about 20 minutes <clears throat> at 400 degrees, excuse me, until they're done. And as I mentioned, I love my bar pan because you don't have to worry about turning anything. Everything cooks evenly. And the oven is at 400 so that everything will caramelize and cook. So let's do tool time so I can show you how I've prepared many of the layers that you're going to see today. And because it's a Mexican theme, we're going to do uh, several different items and use several different tools. Now, one of the items that I used, I want to show you over here in our salad, how I started our salad. And this is layered with hard-boiled eggs on the outside. How beautiful a presentation is that? And then I uh, seasoned all the lettuce. It's, I like to use romaine lettuce because it's a sturdier lettuce and it'll hold up much better if you have to do a little prep ahead of time. So I tossed the lettuce with some of the vinaigrette ahead of time and arranged the egg slices around. And I love this trifle bowl. It has a cover and it has a pedestal too that goes under it. So if you want to know how to get those, let me know. So back here with our egg slicer, and I'll show you how I did even eggs, even slices on the egg. It's like a mandolin style and you slice your eggs like this. It works beautiful on mushrooms. You might remember we use this on strawberries. And you take your egg, we sliced it crosswise and now we're going to put it the other way and look what happens. You get perfectly cubed egg slices inside. And we're going to do the other egg, and that's how I did this bowl of eggs. We're going to do that again. Slide it out, turn it around, and here we go. And I can't stress enough how you want to season every layer. In this layer with the eggs, all you really need is a little bit of salt. And if you'd like some pepper, you can do that as well. So we're going to set that aside. And then, let's see, what else are we putting in there for the slicer? I want to show you with the mandolin here, you want to be very careful. This blade is very, very sharp. It has several different, there's a grater, there's a julienne slicer, there's a regular grater. Um, there's even a V-shaped cutter that you can do tomatoes, which is really convenient. But again, you have to be very, very careful on this because you don't want to slice anything. I'm going to turn it sideways so you can see how quickly this goes. And these are our cucumbers. So there we have the slices, quick and easy, and ready to go. So that's going to be, we're going to add this here. And we're going to have a nice layer. And I'm going to add a little bit of our vinaigrette <coughs> to the cucumbers, again, to flavor the different layers. So this here on the top. And remember, we added salt to this, so we don't really need any salt. 
on this layer. So just a little coating. You don't want to make it soggy. And toss that around. <clears throat> and we have that all set. Now this is a neat trick to do. Well, I think it's a neat trick. We're going to slice some tomatoes, cherry tomatoes. And you think, how am I going to do that? Well, you don't want to use a mandolin. It's too dangerous. Two plastic covers. Very important to have them the same size and also no bigger than the size of your hand or no smaller because what we're going to do is take these little cherry tomatoes, put them on there, take the other cover, place it down, and see why you want to have it large enough so that you hold it down, have a very sharp knife, and you slice through to the other side. And you've sliced all your cherry tomatoes in half. How easy is that? And we have a whole bowl of them right here. And that's how we do them. So how easy is that? And let's put a little dressing in that as well. Just a little bit. And again, be sure to season the layers. I'll be saying that a lot because it is very important to do. So let's toss this. So you can see that a lot of this uh, is assembly, prep work and assembly. There's really not much cooking here at all other than the chicken kebabs that we're doing. And there we go. So look at already all the different colors that we have. Now I'm going to reach over here, <clears throat> excuse me, and get our salad bowl, and we're going to start our assembly. And let me put this here so you can see it and how we're going to do it. Now, you kind of want to eyeball it by color, so let's do a layer of tomatoes on top. And you can, of course, use any bowl that you have, but you can see how pretty this is when you can actually see the colors through the sides of a, that's why I like the clear glass bowls. So let's put all our tomatoes. And I love the cherry tomatoes because they're good most, all year long you can get them and you could do different colored tomatoes too. If you have your garden tomatoes coming in, how pretty would that be? So those are our tomatoes. And then I'm going to, let's do a, another layer of cucumbers. I try and think of what flavors go well next to each other, and I think tomatoes and cucumbers are so Mexican flavored, you know, um, with the salsas and so forth. So we'll put that on top. And depending on the size of the bowl, you could add another layer of lettuce if you want, if you find you need more filler, so to speak. Go ahead and add some more layers of lettuce or whatever you prefer. You could do certainly peppers and onions, but I think we're gonna be good to go in all of these. And I love it when we have just enough of everything. That was just one cucumber, but because it's so finely sliced, a little goes a long way. And you can see the colors building up on the sides as we add different items. Now, how about if we add some of the eggs, just because we had them anyway, and I like to add them in. So I'm just tossing it a bit because remember I added the salt. So we can do, I probably won't do all of these, but certainly a few would be fine. And then I'm gonna go here and bring out some other items that we have. We have chopped red onions, some black beans, and some cooked corn that I cooked in the microwave. I added some of the dressing while it was still warm and that absorbs a lot of the flavors. So we're going to do that, and I'm also going to reach over here for our avocado. 
and I'm going to do that in here, slice our avocado. And I do that at the last meeting, minute rather, because as you know, what happens to avocados if you slice them too soon, they turn brown. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is, again, take our dressing, because it has the lime in it and the vinegar, it's going to keep it from turning brown. So we slice that, twist your avocado carefully, take your knife and twist it. Oops. And I like to slice my avocado right in the skin like so. Do you know if you want your avocado to ripen, you put it next to an apple or in a bag with bananas and it will soften it and it will ripen a lot quicker. So this one here, I'm going to toss in here. You can see all the different colors. So you're thinking about all the different layers and different flavors you can do. Um, that we're gonna we're gonna do this all summer with different flavors, and you're gonna be amazed at how you can take a regular min meal and incorporate it into salads. And how nice would this be to bring to a barbecue for the Fourth of July, or if you're having a summer outing and everybody's eating healthy, and you go and you eat with your eyes first, as you know. So you go for color and presentation. You tell people, yeah, I'll bring a salad, and boy, when you show up with this, you're going to be wowed, and that's what it's all about. So there's our avocado. I'm going to toss a little bit. Let's do the dressing again, and add that in, just a little hint of that. Put that in here, and it's okay if it's a little chunky. Toss that in, spread it around, and with that, I like to pair that with a little bit of the red onion for flavor because the avocado isn't a strong flavor, but the onions are going to incorporate really well with that flavor of the avocado and season it so to speak again I love the colors in this and it's so fun because you'll never get bored with salads if you do things in layers like this and just enjoy the view before you chew so now this is going to be fun what I did in here this is the corn and I have a layer of cheese. Let me grab the cheese real quick. And if we have room, I'm going to add some chips. I'm going to add a little bit of salsa. And if you don't have room, you can always serve these on the side. But what I'm doing now is I'm going to make a nice presentation for the top of your salad. So I think the base, what I'm going to do is some Mexican cheese. Uh, you can do taco flavored cheese, a Monterey Jack blend, plain cheddar, whatever you'd like. Oh, I almost forgot this too. I'm sorry. Olives. Black olives that are sliced and drained. So let's put those in too. And we'll just spread that out. Wow, is that pretty? Very dramatic, isn't it? So that goes in. Now, I knew there was something we forgot. A little bit of shredded cheese. Love the convenience of this. So nice to just get it in a bag. and You can put this in the freezer, you know, so you'll have it on hand whenever you need it. But I got the fresh cheese today. So that goes on. Now, we're going to do, let's do the corn next. We'll do a layer of corn all around the rim. And again, you can do these marinated, uh, much like the, the um, prepare your kebabs the night before, and you can do cook the corn and cool it and pour the uh, dressing in there ahead of time. And 
and you get a bite every different layer is a different flavor a different texture and uh, a different experience if you will it's just a nice elegant way to enjoy the summer season of salads okay now for those of you who like to measure there's exactly 1822 kernels of corn in there don't ask me how i know but there they are and then what are we going to do with this i'm going to take these black beans and i think i'm going to toss them in here with a little vinaigrette and be sure you always rinse and drain your black beans and that's what they look like in a can they're called frijoli negro or black beans and again make sure you rinse them thoroughly because they have a preservative or a residue on them that's not very pleasant but if you do this and a little dressing over the top again to flavor them just a hint and we're gonna lay that next to the corn And there's exactly 812 beans in that segment. <laughs> you know how I love to measure, so. Thank you for everyone who writes in, too, and, and appreciates the comments, the humor, and the casualness of the way I cook. I appreciate it. I guess that's why I'm not much of a baker, because terrible things happen if you don't measure while you're baking. So I just stick to cooking for now. And then what else would you like to see in there? Let's do a little bit of sour cream. <coughs> Boy, <coughs> excuse me, we're running out of room there, aren't we? You didn't think we could fill that bowl. But let's add some sour cream. And you could add a flavoring to this if you want. But I'm just going to put a little dollop in the middle. And if you have some fresh herbs in the garden, go for it, because I certainly would green this up if you'd like. And a little bit for color again, some salsa on the top. And I would put out a separate bowl of the nacho chips, these tortilla multigrains. And you could put some, if you had a broader bowl, a larger opening in the bowl, you can go ahead and even include some crushed tortilla chips on the top. And I always put them on the top because I think if you put them within the salad in a layer, they'd get soggy. So it's either serve them on a side as a garnish along with a salsa and even more sour cream if you'd like, and you're good to go. So I think we've got everything incorporated in here. <clears throat> I'm going to put those in a little bowl for you. And when we come back... We're going to look at our chicken kebabs, our mojito lime chicken kebab skewers, and you've got a meal ready to go. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Here is a wonderful, colorful, healthy, vibrant summer salad uh, and our kebabs. Now, our chicken kebabs have cooked for about 25 to 30 minutes. I like them at 400 degrees. And remember, we marinated them in a mojito lime uh, dressing or a marinade that you can buy or you can do your own in any kind of package seasoning a uh, Mexican style. I added red tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, and again you can use red green peppers. You could even put potatoes on there, small potatoes on there. And what I like to do over here, I serve them with one very warm flour tortillas that I heat in the microwave. So you take those Put them under the skewer and then just slide them off like so and you have a meal. And you know what I like to do as well? You can take some of your salad and put it right on the top. So what an easy, easy serving way um, for you to present and have your guests help themselves. And of course you can add sour cream to the so top of this and a little bit of salsa along with the salad on the side great summer recipe and then our layered salad serve it with some 
wonderful hefty serving spoons and um, you have a feast many layers many flavors many textures and there's something here for everybody to serve themselves thank you again to everybody who watches and to send me emails and comments send me your questions your suggestions and if you do have a question i'll be happy to read the answer on the air for you and uh, i want to thank you again try these recipes for, with your family and friends and may the fork be with you